Rebecca and Jim Constantine and their four children have moved to the Buckinghamshire village where Rebecca grew up. They've bought a 60s bungalow on a plot of land and demolished it to make way for something bigger. I'm not quite sure if it's absolutely disgusting or really quite nice. Rebecca's sourced tons of reclaimed building materials to construct her dream home. Ta da! <laughs> oh my god! But could it turn into an expensive house of horrors? It's stressful and it's hard work. I think anybody who was thinking of doing the same thing, you know, you need to think quite carefully about what you're doing. Now, I've met a lot of people very passionate about buildings, but the people I'm about to meet are something of a first because they've designed their entire house around a reclaimed Georgian staircase. 34-year-old housewife Rebecca and 38-year-old financial investigator Jim and their four young children have moved from a cramped three-bedroom flat in Wimbledon, southwest London, 80 miles away to the rural Buckinghamshire village of Sherrington, where Rebecca was born. Throw that big piece in, buddy. They're already embracing country life and keeping pigs. And last September, they started to build their house on the two-acre plot they bought on the edge of the village. When you were living in London, did you ever imagine yourselves out here with pigs and chickens and all of that stuff? No. <laughs> not at all, not when we first met. I mean, we, uh, you know, we kind of get to these points, yeah. don't we? And you, you sort of look back and you think, well, I guess it must have been the right thing to do, although and we nearly bottled it a couple of times, to be honest with you, but we took the plunge and, uh, you know, we're, we're here now, so I guess it was the right decision. Was it very much always part of the dream, was to build your own home? Yeah, definitely. Yeah? Yeah. My, you know, my dad was a builder and always wanted to build a house, and and especially now, really, wanted to sort of carry on what he'd done. Rebecca's father was killed in a motorbike accident five years ago. As soon as she got the news of his death, she moved back home to be near her mother. But Rebecca, Jim and the family have outgrown her mum's house. And so, six months ago, they started to build their own. The central feature of the house is a 300-year-old cantilevered staircase that cost £3,000. You've actually designed your entire house around a staircase? Yes. Well, it was the first thing we found, we being me. Uh, Did you see it in situ in the previous house? No. Uh, we saw it very green in a reclaimed yard. Awful, yeah, yeah, an awful It had been well, sat there for awful. seven years. There's just a lot of stuff there. And this was just piled on pallets. The treads, I love, I love the fact you can see where people have been up and down. Yeah, I'm really, really pleased with the staircase. Rebecca designed the Georgian-style house herself and got an architect to draw up the plans. Upstairs, the property will have five bedrooms, three with ensuite, and one family bathroom. A galleried landing around the reclaimed feature staircase allows light to flood down to the ground floor where there's a dining room and an office. At the back of the house is a drawing room with a reclaimed fireplace. A glass link will connect the house to the kitchen living room that the family call the barn. It's a single-storey building with a floor space of nearly 100 square metres. The oak trusses that support the roof will all be exposed to create a lovely vaulted ceiling. This is the, uh, what we call the barn. Right. This is our main living space, really. One space. One yeah. complete room. I mean, this is the size of my entire house. Um, I'm dreading hoovering it, <laughs> because I don't think my flex will reach from one end to the other. But I was trying to think if I plugged it in in the middle, whether I'd be able to do both ends, <laughs> but I still don't think I can. <laughs> And continuing Rebecca's unorthodox approach to building a house, the barn has been designed around three reclaimed doors that came from a French vineyard. Wow, look at those. They're enormous. Yeah. Oh, they're beautiful. Yeah. Oh, wow, I love the shape. Really nice shape on them. How much yeah. were they out of interest? Um, I think we paid about £2,000 for all three. 
pairs. Three pairs of doors yeah. for two grand. They're oh, lovely. Thank you. But the doors and staircase are just the tip of the iceberg. Rebecca has spent the last few years collecting reclaimed materials to use in the construction. So where did you get all this stuff from? Mostly it's all come from France and literally all over France. All the clay tiles came off barns in Champagne. I had some railings there from down the bottom side of France towards the south. I've got some lovely old gates from up in Normandy. You've got three contain four containers. Yeah. What's in those? Most of the flooring's in the containers here, and then with black space in people's barns and everything around the village. So there's more than this lot? Yeah. And this is not it? Not really. So what's in here? The flooring's in here. Well, most of it is, anyway. As you can see, there's a fair bit. Have you got any idea how much work laying that lot's going to be? I don't know. I'm trying not to think about it too much. I have laid quite a lot of flooring before, but nothing like this. And not reclaimed flooring either, which is a completely different ball game. I mean, how much of, of this is kind of Becky's idea and then you're just sort of left picking up the pieces? <laughs> <laughs> you may well ask. <laughs> we honestly couldn't afford to have put all new flooring of this kind of quality in there, and reclaim is a way around that. That's lovely stuff. It is, isn't it? A lot it of work, lovely. though. A lot of work. <laughs> Rebecca and Jim will be project managing the build together, even though Jim commutes to London during the week. They hope to move in at the end of summer. Until then, the family are living in two large static caravans on site. How much money do you think you've managed to save with your extraordinary shopping abilities? The builders told my mum that I'd saved 100 grand. To be honest, if we hadn't have done it this way, we wouldn't have been able to build what we're building out there, so we had to save money, you know, as we could. Ultimately, we're probably trying to build something that we probably shouldn't be trying to build because we're not in that bracket, but we're trying to do it for us, for the children, we're trying to build the biggest and the best we can for us now. The plot costs them £420,000, and the budget for the build is 350000 The overall cost of £770,000 will be found from the combination of a mortgage and personal savings. Building such a massive house on a very tight £350,000 budget is going to be really tough. But my biggest concern is the reclaimed materials, because until they start restoring them and fitting them together, I don't think they can really have any idea how long that is going to take. So I just hope they've got understanding builders or deep pockets. Or preferably both. Rebecca and Jim Constantine and their family of four have moved back to the village of Sherrington in rural Buckinghamshire to be near Rebecca's mother. It's wonderful that they've come back and they're enjoying all the things that I enjoyed as a child and her grandmother and her great grandmother and her great grandmother before her. Their ambitious 550 square metre Georgian style new build has been underway for seven months. It's being built to Rebecca's exacting standards. So how deep is that? It's roughly about five inches. I know I'm pernickety. I do have a symmetry problem. But um, so I just want it to be right really for us and to look right at the end is quite important to me. The current focus of the build is the huge kitchen at the back of the house that the family call the barn. Today we are raising the roof on the barn, which is really exciting. Um, in the barn it's all going to be an oak truss roof, so finally going on. The principal contractor John and his team of three are working closely with Rebecca to make her quirky vision a reality. The bet they wanted is to have a... Uh... This kitchen part, the part I think they're mainly going to live in, to look really oldie worldy. So we've made these all on the site out of, um, it is, it's dried oak. It's an unusual job to have, really. Nowadays, it's all trusses like the main house, so it's a nice change to be able to do this. It's quite exciting, actually, because it's finally all taking shape and you feel like you've spent your money on a house rather than a few walls, if you like. One of Rebecca's more unusual finds are some tin window frames, originally part of the grand architecture of Baroque France. She's having three of them on her kitchen. 
we've got to somehow get this to the roof we're doing. And we don't know how yet. John has to work out what to build to accommodate the frames that he affectionately calls Herman Munster windows. Whatever possessed them to buy these. He also has to arrange some repairs. They've all got to be made waterproof before we put them up, and then the new lead and that dress round it to make them watertight. The next job on the house is tiling. Rebecca's found enough tiles for the roof but they've come from three different French properties. It's Jim and six-year-old son Harry's job to sort them out. Some of them are slightly different, so to create the best effect, we're mixing the tiles so that when they go up, all being well, it'll look like one complete picture as opposed to sort of different patches of different colors. Rebecca's constantly scouring the internet for bargains to incorporate into the house. Deliveries are a weekly occurrence. Today, more parquet flooring is arriving from Paris. Is it heavy? Oh, don't worry, yeah, it's working too heavy. I'll get it squirreled away, as you do with 20 sacks of flooring. She has so much reclaimed building material that some has to be stored in neighbours' garages. Some windows we bought, they're a £1,000 for the 10. And then here, and all over here, there are 70 doors. Most normal people don't want 70 doors. I did. And so <laughs> I think they're about €250 Euros for the whole lot. And we will probably use only about 10 of them. Um, but it's still cheaper than making one door. All the tiles have been sorted, and now the main part of the house is nearly watertight. It looks really authentic to me. I'm sure people have walked past going, isn't that meant to be new? But um, yeah, the house has really started to take shape. Jim sets off for work in London at 5.30 every day, leaving Rebecca with the children. Good morning. How do you feel? <laughs> Poor Charlie. You're not well. <laughs> Don't worry, we'll sort you out. Right. Hello, Mum. You all right? <laughs> Having her mum just down the road has its advantages. My mum is invaluable and, uh, God, she comes up every morning, bless her, and she's been having chemo, she gets her makeup on, she's here sort of eight on the dot and she just, she really helps me with that sort of awful hour between eight and nine. She, um, she'll take the children down to school if she's feeling well and everything. Enough for... Nanny! Nanny! Enough for... Yes. It's wonderful for me that Rebecca and Jim have ended up back in Sharrington even though the circumstances in which they decided to was very sad at the time. She moved um, in with me on the day her father got killed, which was um, a very sad time for all of us. That's a good boy. I just love them being here. <laughs> Two, three, four. There's another one there. Look. The project is more than a family home. Rebecca wants to build a legacy. Yeah, no, 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 no. Just had a good thing yesterday. I was just hoping that building something good for my dad, really, because I want it to be what he'd like as well. I can come in uh, uh, in a... You can drive in. Because a big truck and uh, if not possible. Rebecca's got yet another delivery, and it's one she's hoping to keep secret from husband Jim. I'm just going to stash a few lights away before he gets home. I think he's coming home at lunchtime today, so it could be a bit hit and miss. God, now they're out in the street. This is what's more embarrassing. I always like the whole village to see what I bought. Nothing like unloading in the street. I have a weakness nowadays, it's lights. So this one is the best one. So yeah, so I'll clean it all up and all sparkly and it'll go in my new pad. And I'm absolutely over the moon. And if times get really hard, I'll have to sell it. <laughs> yeah. She's always saying to me, let me go on the internet, Mum, and get you lights. And now you won't let me have the lights. You can't have that, but I've got some more coming. <sighs> 
But Rebecca's constant bargain hunting and use of reclaimed materials is starting to have an impact on the cost and schedule of the build. The whole structure of the kitchen is having to be adapted to accommodate the massive wooden barn doors. The builder said if we put them on as they were on hinges, they'd peel the brickwork off as we open them. So we've had to have some steel frames made to sit them in, so that's cost us about four and a half grand, I think, to, to do that. So the doors have got slightly expensive. Another one of Rebecca's purchases arrives. 12,000 bricks that will eventually cloud the barn and sides of the house. Basically, we've got a lorry load of bricks which have been flown in today, which we didn't expect. Um, so it's a mad panic unloading because of the awkwardness of the road. And then hopefully use them straight away. I think the building will change a lot in the next few weeks and it'll fly up. Once this brickwork goes up, things should happen quite quickly. The kids absolutely love it. I mean, they love, they love the fact we're building, they love the fact there's people here all the time. <laughs> the central feature of the house is the reclaimed grand staircase, but it has no ironwork. So determined to find a bargain, Rebecca and Jim are off to Paris. But there's no time for sightseeing. It's straight to the outskirts and the reclaim yard. Bonjour. Oh, well, that's nice. This is amazing. That's great. So what's the total length? The rumpel, it's good for, for, for yeah. escalier. Yeah. But the, uh, the balcon, if we, if we fall out, uh, we met. It's got about two and a half metres of the balcony, but we need a lot more. But you can actually have the angle of the ramp change so you can make it into balcony so you, it can all be adjusted but it's again as usual buying old stuff means it's some work now i could spend all day looking at things like this that's amazing and needless to say we seem to have lost becky uh, in the depths of some reclaim yard i think it's time for lunch now dear how, how tall yeah perfect Perfect, Serge. 287. Nice, aren't they? Yeah. <laughs> I will email you, Serge. Yeah. <laughs> but I have no idea where she's thinking or, <laughs> like she says, it'll be an email conversation, no doubt. And they'll just turn up. It's summer, and I'm back for my second site visit, keen to see if Rebecca's unusual approach to building a house is working out. But first, Jim wants to show me the new additions to the family. They're tiny. Well, they're a few days old. They're a lot bigger than they were. Hello, fella. Oh, he's so sweet. So did you know that they were pregnant? Yeah, we did, Well, because we artificially inseminated them. We bought some sperm and artificially inseminated them. Who artificially inseminated them? Me and my pig partner. Really? With a special kit. How was that? Um, different. Different. <laughs> the plan is to provide meat for the family and to sell any surplus. I'm pleased to see all the tiles on the house looking like they've been there for years. But I have a concern that the barn is out of proportion to the rest of the building. But how are you feeling in general about progress? Because, I mean, a lot's happened since I was last here. Yeah, it's really coming on, isn't it? We're yeah. really pleased with what's happened, and we seem to be on schedule. And so these are the famous Herman Monster windows? Yes. I think they work really well. They've been fixed up now, so hopefully they'll be watertight. They've gone up reasonably well. So, yeah, I think, I think they look good. I mean, it's a big old building, isn't it? Yeah, it is, actually. It was going to be a lot bigger, so... Um... I'm really glad you shrunk it. Yeah. To be totally honest with you, I think it's still... A little bit too big compared to the size of the main house. Oh, I know what you mean. Because it looks to me like the rear windows there are 
look into the back side of the roof, is that right? They do. They do. The roof does sit a bit too high, doesn't it? What came first, the size of the barn or the doors? It was designed around the doors in many respects. I don't think it's a design approach that any professional no. would advise you to go through. And I think anybody who was thinking of doing the same thing, you know, you need to think quite carefully about what you're doing. There's no doubt that Rebecca's got an eye for quirky architectural features, but it remains to be seen if she can successfully bring them all together in one building. I sort of feel that you're in a, an interesting place in terms of design in that there is the potential for it to look quite Disney. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm hoping it will look quite grand, but not look over the top and not look too, you know, footballers' wives and that. But, yeah, I do think it's a really fine line you tread, and sometimes when you're sort of thinking about things on your own, you're not quite sure if it's absolutely disgusting or really actually quite, really quite nice. Well, this is quite some project. One thing, it's massive. It's absolutely vast. But also, I find the, the approach really intriguing of mixing the, the reclaimed with the new build. And normally, when you're involved in a build like this, you have a really strong sense at this stage how much you're going to like it when it's finished. But with this project, I have absolutely no idea. Only time will tell. Jim and Rebecca Constantine have been building their new home in rural Buckinghamshire for 10 months. I'm hoping it will look quite grand but not look over the top. Rebecca's incorporating as many unusual reclaimed materials into the build as possible. Her plan is to cloud the front of the house with stone that came from a hospital in the northeast of England. But before fitting, it has to be cut to size, a process that will take weeks. Hopefully there'll be enough to do the building, but until we cut it, we can't really tell. The central feature of the house remains Rebecca's reclaimed staircase that's still awaiting its ironwork. The balustrade that Rebecca bought in France has been shipped here to the heart of the fence because it needs to be altered and extended. So she's brought it to a place called Stackwell Forge, and it's one of the few places in the country that can actually do the work. Blacksmith Paul Bodger has already started the job. So this is actually the stuff that Rebecca bought in France and had shipped over? Yeah. What do you think of it? Is it good quality? Oh, it's some of the best quality I've seen. So if she was getting something similar made from scratch, what do you think it would have cost her? Of this quality, um, I would put a starting figure of about 30k on it. 30,000 pounds? Yeah. And she's going to do it for about 8,000 pounds? Possibly, yeah. Eight or 9,000 pounds. So she's done really well. I <laughs> think she has, yeah. Rebecca needs to create six more metres of ironwork to go round her landing. Other sections will have to be adapted to fit the angle of her stairs. It will take Paul seven weeks to complete the job. So you're effectively turning this piece into the template that you're going to form everything else on. Yeah, we're using it uh, like tracing paper, if you wish. Can I have a go? If you want it. Are you sure? Yeah, I'd love to. All yours. In total, over 70 metres of steel will be used. That looks good. I think that's going to fit. So, well, I have done it before. I have to be honest with you, what a long time ago. Yeah, I'll put that bit in, and I'm not going to tell Rebecca where it is, so if she knows. <laughs> you can blame me for anything then, can't you? Go, no, Charlie oh. did one bit. <laughs> you work it out. Back on site, there's good news. The sandstone cladding is half on. And now the builders can see exactly how much stone the house needs and what yeah. they have left to work with. It does look quite bland at the moment, but once the actual white works in the windows and that, it's going to stand it, it will really stand out really well. It will need to clean down as well after we've finished. To ease the financial strain of this massive build, Jim spends evenings and weekends working on the property. Tonight, is fitting central heating. It's really our time to, to get involved now. 
I've done um, bathrooms and kitchens and bits and bobs before, but I've never run um, I've never run a sort of complete system round. My daily routine is um, up at half five, leave here by six, into the office by about seven, and then back here by um, about five, and then usually out here for two to three hours, really. There's no other choice, really. Is it that one? That one. Help, help, whoop, whoop. Oh, nuts. Didn't do that one, did I? Never mind. As long as I remember to put the right bits in where, hopefully it won't leak. <laughs> With the pipes in, it's a quick good night to the children before he moves on to sanding down the old doors so they're ready for the builders to fit. It's just a matter of keeping up, really, so John can come here in the day and then one of the boys can fit the frame, whatever it may have to be. They're not waiting for, you know, something to be stripped because the builders aren't here to, to strip doors and things like that. They're here to do the important stuff. It's tiring. I mean, usually try and finish it about half past nine, ten o'clock in the evenings. Try and get enough sleep and then off to work in the morning. Yeah, just a matter of keeping on top of it, really, and not thinking about it too much sometimes. Have you had enough? I have. Three months after beginning work, and a month later than scheduled, Paul the blacksmith is on site to fit, but is having problems with the banister. Don't know. I can't be doing without gas, but I'm not sure what we can do. Because we're using old materials, Paul's got a gap in the stairwell. Just trying to work out how to make it look pretty. I was just wondering if we could just put a bit in the top and a bit in the bottom and have the gap as a... A feature. And head builder John is also having trouble with the barn doors that came from the French vineyard. I've got to take 10 mil off the bottom to match this one. We'll offer it up and then we're going to have to either take a bit more off the frame or off the top of the arch because the arches are not the same. Do some puzzles. Determined to get the family out of the caravans, Rebecca's roped in everyone she can. Down the road, stepfather John is hard at work. These were old um, sash windows that were um, reclaimed, and now it's a question of fitting um, over 80 double glazed panels. And Rebecca has found jobs for her uncles. Dale and Tristan are cleaning up all the old oak flooring that's come up from France. So obviously, um, it's a lot cheaper to bring it back from France, but it comes at a price, and the price is you've got to clean it. So they're cleaning out all the tongue and grooves ready for Jim to lay it. Justin used to work with my dad on the, on the um, building sites and everything. So I think if the dad was here, it'd probably been on the finishing touches by now. It's a long way off still, I think. A long way off. Finally, one of the three barn doors is in place. We, we expected it to be a bit of a nightmare, um, and it's turned out to be a bit of a nightmare. <laughs> yeah, I'm really yeah. pleased with those. They've hardly been any trouble or expense. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's a lesson yeah. to be learned with reclaim. There's a lot of fiddling about, but I think it'll be worth it. The reclaim materials have definitely cost us time, if you like, um, having to do things up all the time and... Things like that. Living on a building site for longer than expected is getting the whole family down. Have we been in here 15 months? Uh, for, yeah. And guess what we've eaten for 15 months? Pasta and sauce. Okay. It's slightly depressing, the fact that we're going to be out in the caravans longer, but I don't think we could have realised the scale of it. You can't ask the builders to work any longer. They work all the hours God sends. 
it's the cold and the, just the close proximity of everybody. I mean, it'll be amazing when we go in there, the space that we've got compared to what we've got in here. Um, I think will make a big difference, but we, we want to get out. It's been four months since I last visited Jim and Rebecca here in Sherrington. Now the plan was always that the builders would be finished by the end of summer and that Jim would then work through to get the family into the house when winter came. But I've heard that the builders are still on site. Well, it's good to see that they managed to get all that stonework up. I was worried they wouldn't have enough. Clearly they have. Scaffolding's come down. The roof is looking very good and it looks very grand. But there's still no finished windows and no front door. Inside, it's a similar story. It looks like every room is a long way from being complete. And Jim and Rebecca are still living in the caravans. So the, the builders are still here. Why is that? Because the reclaimed materials have taken a lot longer to um, sort out and get on the building. The barn doors have taken John two weeks to fit them and I don't think they're finished yet. I mean, how much time do you think you've lost from your initial schedule? Well, we, we hope really to be out sometime towards the end of the summer, stroke autumn, so I don't know, probably four, four weeks plus on top of that at the moment. No, more than four weeks. Four months. Yeah, we're, 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 I mean, John sort of said a year, didn't he, when he started? And that was he... September. September, so a year to September, so we'll probably be four months behind by the time we get in, if you like. Are there any other implications of the schedule running behind? Yeah, the main ones are caravans and the fact we've only got permission to live in these caravans until the 31st of December this year. So you have to move out by the 31st of December? In theory, yes. Given the fact you've got you know, a house that is clearly quite a long way from being finished and you've got this this real hard deadline of getting out of these caravans by the 31st of December. I mean, how are you going to run the next six weeks? Our budget doesn't allow us to just chuck money at it, but if we can get in there by the 31st of December, we'll get some sort of a bathroom up and running and some sort of a kitchen up and running. It can't be any worse than being out here. It's probably a lot warmer, so we'll go for it. There's a lot to do in the next six weeks. The plan is for Jim to do even more of the labouring now the shell's complete. I mean, how are you feeling about the build? Because you're not only holding down a full-time job in London with a commute, you've got the four kids, and then you're taking an awful lot on your shoulders to get this finished. It's stressful and it's hard, and it's hard work. I mean, no doubt about that whatsoever. But um, we've got a vision. We can't afford to pay someone else to do all that vision, so we have to do it ourselves. That's, that's ultimately it. OK, well, shall we uh, see how it's done, then? Yeah, sure. There are 500 square metres of parquet flooring to be laid. So, I've never laid parquet. Neither have I until I did this. <laughs> it's not as easy to lay as a, as a new floor. It's not as easy as it looks, is it? It's a hell of a task. <laughs> Sure. You're going to be an expert by the time you finish this. <laughs> an expert with a bad back. <laughs> with Rebecca's vision starting to take shape, it's an opportunity for her to take stock. Standing here, looking back, are you proud? Yeah, very proud, yeah. I get all upset because I think of my dad. Do so. you? And is that really what sort of driving you forward? Yeah, definitely, yeah. Is that why you're pushing yourself so hard? No, I mean, we always push ourselves hard, but I sort of hope now that we've done it and hopefully my dad would be very pleased. Do you think he would? I hope so, by me. <laughs> I hope he would be, yeah. He would have loved to have built that. <laughs> I 
given that this is such an emotionally charged project and they put so much of their heart and soul in it, Jim and Rebecca are really stuck between a rock and a hard place because they have got to get out of their caravans in the next six weeks because of their planning. And in order to hit that deadline, I think there'll be a real temptation to rush and possibly cut corners. I think that would be a real shame. For the past few years, lorries from all over Europe have been arriving in this quiet Buckinghamshire village, bringing the most incredible old building materials. These have been altered, restored and assembled to create a very grand family home. For the Constantines, it's been a real adventure. And for Rebecca, a chance to go on one of the biggest shopping trips in history. And I'm here to see how it's all turned out. Well, from the outside, Rebecca and Jim have certainly achieved what they set out to. The clever use of old stone makes this Georgian-style house look as if it could have been here for years. Hello. Hi. Hi, Charlie. Hi, Jim. How are you doing? Lovely to see you. Thank you. Now, this has come on, hasn't it? It's come Thank on a you. long way. Yeah, we absolutely love it. The staircase looks incredible. Has it worked out the way you'd hoped? Yeah, definitely. absolutely love it. And the fact that you've managed to make it cantilever properly is really nice. I think we've done it justice, really. Do you know which one of those I made? I think that's the one we had to replace. <laughs> Was it? It fell off. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> so are you living in the house yet? No, not in here yet. Still in the caravans. But Still in the caravans? It's <laughs> a nightmare. But we're getting there. We are getting there. Because yeah. I thought you had a really sort of hard deadline at the end of December. You had to be out of the caravans because of planning. We did, and I contacted the planners at the beginning of December, um, and uh, I haven't done anything back. So, with that in mind, we're just, just trying to get out as soon as possible. You're over the worst with this now, so you just feel like you're on the home straight, I suppose. And what are you thinking about in terms of colours in here? I'm thinking yellow. Yellow? Really bright, bright yellow at the moment. Could be good. Could be nuts. You never quite know. I don't like stealing by halves. No, I've noticed that. I've noticed that. <laughs> if you don't try, you won't see. The drawing room with its reclaimed fireplace isn't finished yet, but you get a sense of how impressive it will be. It's really nice having this kind of daylight at the end of the corridor, isn't it, to aim at. Well, this has really come on in here. That roof is beautiful, isn't it? Yeah, I'm really pleased with it. Beams look great, don't they? Yeah, really nice roof structure. It's an amazing space, this room. Yeah, absolutely. Really, when you think of what it was. As the kitchen's in. Yes, very excited about the kitchen. Where did you get all the kitchen units from? I actually bought a complete kitchen off um, an internet auction site. So these are all second hand? Yeah. And that looks like a sort of an industrial kind of catering cooker. Yeah, it's I'm going to have a big it? roast in there when we get in here. Is that what you're looking forward to? And have you worked out if you can hoover the whole thing yet? With the <laughs> hoover flex? <laughs> Do you know, I was sweeping the screeded floor the other day and it took me about three hours. And it suddenly <laughs> dawned on me that I was always going to be sweeping this floor forevermore now and <laughs> it's going to take forever. Well, I think this room is, is, is great. It's probably my favourite room. Upstairs, the children's bedrooms have been made a priority because they've spent so long sharing a room in the caravan. Today's the first time they've seen them. What do you think? Wow! Look at that! <laughs> wow! Daddy, it's got my name on it! I love my room. My favourite thing is my car bed. <laughs> 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 what do you think? <laughs> like the diggers? Whose beds are these? Look. <laughs> You're bouncing. <gasps> what do you think? <laughs> Look. <laughs> like it. 
But in Jim and Rebecca's room, there's still a long way to go. Well, this doesn't look like a bedroom. It looks more like a furniture storehouse. <laughs> yeah, I've just started to turn the containers out. Jim probably hasn't seen 90% of the stuff in this room. I try and ignore it. <laughs> but do you think, I mean, you're going to walk into this house and there's going to be very little of your taste in it. Is that not slightly strange? No. You're fine with that? Yeah. doesn't absolutely. really interest you, does no, it? No, it doesn't interest me. Not interested in shopping or for no. anything like that anyway, so... It's just not my bag. <laughs> Luckily. <laughs> Jim and Rebecca don't want to admit how much they've gone over their £350,000 budget. But some of the reclaim has ended up costing a lot more than Rebecca bargained for. The £2,000 barn doors ended up costing £10,000 to install. But other features like the fireplace, stairs, banister, parquet flooring and radiators have given this new build a high quality finish that Rebecca couldn't have achieved without spending tens of thousands more. As well as holding down a full-time job and working on the house, Jim has spent the last year rearing pigs. So are those the piglets that I saw? Yeah, the same lot. We sold three as wieners to a friend, but then we've got the, the seven left out of the ten, yeah. God, they've really grown, haven't they? Yeah, they have, yeah. We've done, we're really pleased with this lot. So where have the, the other pigs gone? They've, they've gone, their, their sausages, some of them have gone to the pub, and um, we sell someone's friends and whatnot, so, yeah, they've gone. Good sausages? Yeah, yeah, very good. Excellent. Rebecca's mum, Jackie, is also impressed by what's been achieved. I think the house is absolutely fantastic, and it's um, a credit to Rebecca. Her father would have been very proud of her because he built a big house like this. You think her dad would have liked what she's done? Oh, he would have been so proud. She's actually done it for him, in a way. Now that you're getting towards the end of this project, how do you feel about the process? I mean, it's been a big, big old project, hasn't it? It's been a really long project, I mean, and it has been really stressful at times, but... You know, we're getting towards the end of it now and we're getting really excited about the next step. But yeah, we're, we're really looking forward to getting in there. And what's it like standing out here and sort of seeing things like your, your Herman Munster windows and your doors kind of in and looking finished? For me, it's a big relief because obviously when I was buying some of them, uh, you know, it's my decision and, and a bit of a worry, but to see them on there and done, it's just fantastic. It's, it's a great feeling. There's a lot of blood, sweat and anguish here, I can tell you. <laughs> I know that part of this project was about a legacy for your, for your dad. I mean, how are you feeling about that now? It's, you know, nearly finished. I think... I hope I've done a, a good job. I would hope I've done that. I think he'd be immensely proud, or I don't think I know he'd be immensely proud of Rebecca, definitely. Well, I think it's amazing. I think it's a real testament. It's a real testament to sort of backing yourself and, and following what you believe, and I think it's incredible what you've achieved. Thank you very Thank much. You. Well, this has certainly been a unique project. And personally, I have found Rebecca's resourcefulness a real inspiration. And with a team of great builders and Jim's endless stamina, they are well on their way to creating their dream family home. But over the past year, it's become clear to me that this project is not just about opulent staircases and grand stone facades. It's about creating a fitting tribute to Rebecca's dad, and I'm sure he would be immensely proud with what they've achieved.